I'm doing an international giveaway of three copies of the Crystal King Temple. Stay tuned to the end of this video for more information on that and how you can win. A couple of months ago, LEGO released the Crystal King Temple as a part of their Ninjago Crystallized Wave. When I first saw the box, I got really excited because I thought aesthetically this thing looked incredible. The floating islands, the pink crystals, it was just such a perfect concept in my eyes. However, once I had it all built up, I couldn't help but feel a little bit disappointed. While I still did love a lot of aspects of this set, I couldn't help but feel like the final product just felt unfinished in person. There was just so many different places where I could notice flaws, and that was really disappointing to me because I was really excited for this one, and I felt like there was so much potential to this aesthetic. But I've been thinking about it, and now that a few months have passed, could I make a better Crystal King Temple myself? So, I set out to do just that. I contacted the good people off the LEGO Ambassador Network and asked them to send me three more copies of the Crystal King Temple. And a few months later, they arrived. I also requested one extra copy of the Crystal King mech, because that set does use a very similar aesthetic to the temple, so I feel like the parts of that set could be useful in creating a newer, bigger temple. Now, I didn't want to just modify the original temple, because while I think there is improvements that could be made just with the base temple, I wanted to completely redesign it. So I decided to set some goals for myself before I got started. Number one, I wanted to stick with the same layout as the original set. By that, I mean there was two sections of the original set, one which had like the puzzles to get to each of the golden weapons, and then the big main temple in the back. I wanted to keep that in my final version, just have both of those sections be a lot larger and a lot more detailed. And then there was a few things that I felt were flaws in the original set that I wanted to fix and improve in my custom version. First, I wanted to make sure there was puzzles for all four of the golden weapons. One thing I didn't like about the original is how there was really only puzzles for the nunchuck and for the Sword of Fire. The shurikens were just sort of awkwardly sitting at the front, you could just grab them right away. And the scythe was placed in the temple, which I guess was fine, but I would have preferred if the temple was made more to be an actual temple, and if that was not tied in with like the whole golden weapons puzzle. So that was my first main goal, create unique puzzles for each of the four golden weapons. My next main goal was to fix the base of the build. This is one of my biggest complaints of visually with this set. I absolutely hated just the plain black flat base of these. I get the vibe that they're going for is like the islands are floating in the air, but the black abyss only works if you're like playing on a black table. If you're on a lighter surface, such as my light box, the black just really stands out and in my opinion doesn't fit the vibe that this is going for. So I wanted to make sure the base of the build was a little bit rockier this time around on every single part of the build. Another thing I wanted to fix is I want to have proper shrines for each of the weapons. We see this with the nunchucks in the official build, but the Sword of Fire is just sort of randomly placed there, same thing with the Shuriken's Vice. And again, the Side of the Quakes is in the temple, but it could use its own proper shrine. Another thing I think would be cool, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it, I would like to include like the table and chairs for the Council of the Crystal King that we saw on the show. Now, I do want to mention I will not be going for show accuracy with this temple. I've seen people on Twitter and whatnot create custom Crystal King temples that like are more show accurate, but that's not my aim with this build. If I get something show accurate, cool, that's great, but I just want to make a fun playset that could be its own actual set, and one that's similar to the original but improves things in ways that I felt needed to be improved. And then a few other ideas that aren't requirements would be cool if I could get it done. I'd like to include a proper Tensegrity build, because the original leaks for this set mentioned that there was a Tensegrity build in there, and in the final version, I mean, we did have the cage hanging off the side, but that wasn't really Tensegrity, so if possible, I'd like to make an actual floating island using the Tensegrity technique, and then I just want to make everything bigger. I don't actually have many complaints with the actual Crystal King Temple part of the original set, it's mostly the outskirts that I don't like, but I do still want to make that part of the build bigger. So, with that plan in mind, I opened all four sets, stumped all the pieces out, and you can see I had quite a lot to work with, this will easily be the biggest custom build I have ever done, so now let me show you the results. So here is my custom Crystal King Temple, and not to boast too much, but I'm actually pretty proud of how this turned out. I pretty much accomplished accomplished all the different things I set out to do, and while there's a few things maybe I would change given more time and more parts, considering the parts limitations I had in this challenge, using only three of this set plus the Crystal King mech, I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. Now this isn't like my custom mech video, I was going to allow myself to use my own parts if I felt like I needed them, but in fact I think there's only one part in this entire build that did not come from those two sets. If anybody can spot it, let me know in the comments, I'm not going to mention what it was. But yeah, every other part you see in this set came from those four boxes that you just saw me open, so now let's take a look at everything up a little bit closer. So we'll start out with my improved front section of the build. This I could say for sure is definitely an upgrade. My actual temple, while I personally prefer it to the original, I could see how some people might prefer the original, but this I genuinely think is just a straight up improvement. So to start, I create like the center platform right here, and this branches out to the path to each of the four golden weapons. It starts like this very purple crystalline path down here to like actually be the entrance, and then it dips down to this more like natural looking terrain. I've got this single crystal piece in the center, which I don't know, I just thought looked cool 
gold worked well as a centerpiece. And then you can see there's four different paths you can take. We'll start with this one on the right because this one is adapted from the original build, and this one's the path to the Sword of Fire. Now the original set did do this whole floating platform thing, however like I said at the beginning I just felt a little underwhelmed by it, the play feature on it wasn't that great, so my idea here was to make it longer, bigger, make it look a little better, and make it a little more fun to play with. So first I have this little staircase that you have your character walk up, and this is where they make the initial jump up to the first platform. And you can see I've got Kai up here right now. And this platform is done very similarly to how it's done in the official build, however I've extended it up to be a little bit taller. And one difference is on the original build it can only swing back and forth a little bit. I made sure this one though was able to go full through into 60 degrees, just to make it more of an obstacle to jump on and make it more fun to play with. You also may notice the base underneath is a lot more rocky this time around. Still a bit more black than I would like, I could probably fill that with a bit more rocks, but I still think it's an improvement on what was there originally. Then up higher we have a slightly bigger platform, and this one can't rotate a full 360 degrees, but it still has a bit of rotation to it, which is nice, still makes it an obstacle. And just like on the original build, I have these purple blades that come up and get in the way. Now I found it weird on the original how these blades ended in a mini ball joint, but there was nothing to connect to them. So this time around, I have two blades that are connected so that when you bring one up, it brings the other one up. You can see when I push down the first one, the other one comes with it as I move my finger across. So the idea with those is they'll get in the minifigures away as they're trying to climb up the platforms. And then again, I've tried to improve the rocky terrain down here, got some trans pink parts to add some colors, as well as a crystal extending out the side. And then at the very end, I've got the floating island, which holds the sword of fire at the top. This floating island is very inspired by the one that holds the nunchucks in the official build. However, I swapped the black technic pieces out for the trans pink ones, just because I think the trans pink ones are a lot cooler. And you can see that's held up pretty high in the air, and there's a full look at the shrine at the top of the island. Again, very similar to the official one, but I tried to make each of the shrines different. So the unique thing I did with this one is I had these crystals extending out the top, and I actually think that looks pretty cool. I also gave the sword a proper pedestal because it didn't have that in the official set. So I think this entire section turned out pretty good. I'm honestly pretty happy with it. The only thing I'd change is add more rocks to the bottom maybe, but that's a very easy fix, which honestly I could do. Now coming back to the center, there's three other paths I can take. One of the goals I had with this is I didn't want to make any of the obstacles the same, so I wasn't going to do like the floating island jumping again for any of the other weapons. So I was trying to think, how can I make different obstacles for the different weapons? So let's take this left path now and see what I did for the shuriken's of ice. This section is definitely my least pretty one, however it might be one of my favorites in terms of actual functionality. Because you can see you take the steps up right here, there's a crystal piece, you hop up, and the actual island and shrine might look a little bit generic to you, but that's because this is actually a tensegrity build. So just like I mentioned at the beginning of this video as one of my goals, I was actually able to get tensegrity build to work, and I was actually able to incorporate it into a much bigger build than I was expecting, which I'm super happy with. As such though, I feel like I wasn't able to make it look as nice as I was hoping, because this was my first time ever trying a Tensegrity build, so I wasn't sure exactly how to guarantee that it was stable, so I figured out that this worked, and then I didn't touch it because I didn't want to mess it up. So while the bottom and the path leading up to it are not the prettiest, I still think the shrine itself is pretty cool, and again I managed to make a rocky bottom that fits with everything. I also want to kind of make a theme for each challenge, so for the Sword of Fire one, the theme was like agility, because you have to imagine that your minifigure is fast enough and strong enough to be able to jump over all of these and dodge the blades. With this one I want to imagine that the challenge here is balance, because obviously the integrity build is loose, right, it shakes around, and as you just saw it can fall over if we do something wrong. So if this were to actually be played with, you can imagine like retrieving the Shurgan's advice without knocking it over, and that's like the goal of this build. I would love to see something like this in an official set because I just feel like Tensegrity is a lot of fun. The way it's able to hold itself up like this, it's just so cool. But yeah, there you can see my full shrine. This one did something a little bit different with the top right here where I put these golden teeth. And I definitely don't think it looks as good as the others, but it's unique and I like that. I also used the crystal piece at the back right here to sort of represent crystallized ice because obviously it's the shurikens of ice here. And the yeah, shrine and everything that holds it up, this is definitely my least favorite part of the build that I did, but I'm still very proud of it and I think it's fun and that's what I was going for. So I think that's most important. Next, we'll take the left path, and this is what leads to the Nunchucks of Lightning. Now, I really like the Nunchucks of Lightning puzzle in the original build, and I originally planned on keeping it the same, just making it more detailed. However, I ended up doing something similar, but with a new twist, and I'm actually really proud of what I came up with. So I guess the theme with this one maybe be patience. I don't know, it depends on how you imagine this puzzle going. But you can see, just like on the original, you have this stairway. However, the top of the stairway it leads into a pit of nothing. Just jagged rocks and crystals, which would probably really hurt if you fell into them. And this, in your imagination, could be as long as you want. But once the time is completed, you turn this right here and it spins the staircase. And now the staircase is facing a floating island, which holds the nunchucks of lightning. You can then have your character jump from the staircase to the island. And there you go, the challenge has successfully been completed. The shrine that you reach is once again on another floating island. Similar to all the other ones, though this time I have trans pink swords coming out the sides, which I think looks pretty cool. This one did something kind of cool with it. It's built on an angle. Like you can see, the angle of the island 
doesn't match the angle of the base. And that was something that was really fun to figure out how to do. And while it definitely does make this part of the build a little less stable than some other parts, I still think it's pretty good and honestly adds the overall, like, floating in the air vibe. Because that little wiggle, I don't know, it makes it feel more realistic. But yep, up here, there's room to post figures that holds the nunchucks of lightning. And around the back, it's not very pretty, so we're not going to talk about that. Here's a closer look at the base of this build, though, with that crystal pit that you could fall into, and some more, like, rocky terrain at, like, the base of the island. And now, finally, we have one more section to go up, and that is the top left. So you go up a few steps and it takes you to this large flat platform, and that leads up to this wall back here, which holds up yet another floating island. Now the theme with this one is meant to be strength, and the idea behind it is really simple. If I take coal off, you can see it's basically just meant to be a rock climbing wall. So I guess the challenge is a character has to be strong enough to lift themselves all the way up. But once you get up there, you have the tallest of the shrines, the set of the quakes is on its own pedestal this time, but aesthetically it's very similar to the other shrines. Once again, very rocky base beneath, and there's two of these large pink crystal blades out the back, which is just here to add a little extra bit of detail to the ground, and just give more life to the overall build. So I think that's about it for the front puzzle section of my Crystal King Temple. As I said, I'm honestly very proud of this. I think this is a lot of fun, and this just feels more complete to me. There's something for each of the weapons, there's a puzzle for each of the ninja, and I like how it's actually able to theme everything too. We have the agility challenge, the balance challenge, the patience challenge, and of course the strength challenge. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this part of the build, what improvements would you make? But of course, we're not done, there's one more part of this build, and that is the main temple that goes behind it all. Now I think all of this looks really cool on display, but we're gonna move that front section back out of the way for now so we can take a look at this up a little bit closer. Now this one's not changed as much as the front section, it's pretty much just made bigger from the original but let me go through what I put together. So first off, the base is a lot rockier, which is nothing all too exciting, right? It's a pretty simple fix, but I do think it is a major improvement. Just fixes like the overall vibes of this set. I honestly think it looks really good. I'm pretty proud of it. It's still held up by the trans pink technic pieces though. And then we get to the first part that I'm really proud of. And I decided that I'm gonna try to make a face on it because we know the Chris looking temple in the show does have an Oni face. And while I wasn't going for complete show accuracy, I want to make some sort of reference to the show. So I thought it'd be cool to make some sort of face. And the original idea was to make it look like the Crystal King, by having it put together it looks more like a bowl, but I still think it works pretty well, because you can see you've got the glowing pink eyes in the back, the horns coming out the sides, and then the nose at the very bottom. And because the Crystal King himself has a very animal-like mask, I think this fits it pretty well and does a good job of like, fitting the overall vibe that he's going for. The sides of the temple are pretty much just the backs of the original temple, just extended out to be a little bit bigger. And the very back is not the prettiest angle, but I do like the trans pink blades that I have coming out. And then the other side's pretty much identical to the one you saw. But now, coming up to the first floor of the actual temple, this might be the part of the build that I'm the most proud of. It's definitely not the most unique, the best looking, but I'm just so proud that I made this work. This is the area for the Council of the Crystal King. You can see there's six chairs in there, one for each of the generals, then there's the three black tables in front of them, and then the table in the center, and this is where you can place whatever they're talking about, so like as we saw in the show, one of the crystal spiders popped up right here. But yeah, I absolutely love that I was able to include this. Obviously these seats don't work for like Pytho, you'd have to take his tail off or something. But but they provide versatility, and I think that's what's most important. But yeah, I think this is super cool. It does take up this entire part of the floor, but I think it was worth it, because I think it looks really cool, and it's something from the show I was actually able to incorporate into the set. But now, coming up to the top floor, here we have the Crystal King's throne, and this is pretty much the same as the original set, I just made it all bigger. The throne itself is literally exactly the same as the original set, it can even be removed. But you can see the terrain around is a lot bigger, so if you want to display figures up here, or have like a fight scene up here, you can. I also have a Crystal Cage off to the side, and this one's definitely not incorporated in the best. This was a last minute addition, so if I were to remove it, the entire build would probably look a bit better, but I wanted to include it somewhere and I couldn't think of anywhere else to put it. But you can see I've got Lloyd trapped in there right now, but it just swings open like this, you can remove him. And you may have noticed, I appreciate like the storytelling of sets, right? I like for there to be ways to play with it. So I had storytelling in like the different ways to obtain the four golden weapons, and I guess this is another goal of the set, is once the ninja obtain all the golden weapons, they have to use it to save Lloyd from the cage up here. So yeah, if you were to play with that, there's lots of room to pose all the figures up here, you could put more Avenged Stone guards up here if you wanted, just lots of room, lots of possibilities. So while it's not the most unique in terms of the build up here, play space is something that's very important to me. And then there's lots of trans pink out the back just to make the throne look a lot bigger. And then around the Crystal King is essentially just a much bigger version of the Golden Weapon Shrines. There's a look at all of that from the back. And that's everything for my custom Crystal King Temple. Let me know what you guys thought of it in the comments below. Personally, I'm very proud of it. I am not a mock builder, like I've pretty much only built official sets up until this year, but you've seen I've done a few other custom build videos on my channel recently, and it's helped me like learn more about LEGO, and I've been able to create cool things such as this, so I've been having a lot of fun with it. Completely unrelated, but I just realized I have these two pieces left over after building. Hmm, I wonder if there's anything I can do with these. 
Let me know in the comments what your favorite and least favorite parts of this build are. Do you think this is better than the official one or worse? And if you have any suggestions for future custom build videos like this one, let me know in the comments. And then one final thing for the video, I have my contest to announce. So I have big news, this will be my first ever worldwide contest. Or at least mostly worldwide. I'll have some restrictions which will be listed in the description below, because I won't be shipping these sets out myself, they'll be coming directly from LEGO. So I think the contest is only going to be available in countries where you have a LEGO shop at home, but you can read more about that in the description. Point is, it's not United States only this time, so a lot of you guys are going to have a much better chance, but here's how the contest works. So I'm going to be giving away three copies of the original Crystal King Temple. In previous contests, only the first place winner has gotten a prize, but this time around, first, second, and third place will all get their own Crystal King Temple. Now what is the contest, you may ask? I want you to make a custom minifigure of your own original character. But the problem for this character is, what if the Crystal King was not the Overlord? Because obviously we know the Crystal King is going to be revealed to be the Overlord that's been revealed in trailers, and I mean there's so much symbolism in this as the point to the Overlord. But what if it wasn't the Overlord? What if it was a new character we had never heard of? I want you to make your own custom minifigure of what this villain would look like, and describe their backstory, what their motivation is, and why they've been buying all this Vengestone. You also have to be subscribed to the Bricks by Mind YouTube channel and be following the Bricks by Mind Instagram page to enter. There's one more rule though, you can't use any of the parts from the official Crystal King. So make your minifigure, write your story, and post it on Instagram. Use the hashtag Bricks by Mind Crystal King Temple Contest. The contest will end in two weeks, and then shortly after that, I'll go through all the entries, pick the winners, and then I'll DM the winners to get shipping addresses and everything, so that the prizes can actually be shipped out. As I said, unlike previous contests, this will be international with some slight restrictions, which you'll see in the description of this video. But if you were to win the contest, I will need the shipping address of someone 18 or older. So that could be you yourself, or that could be a parent or guardian, but for the winners to receive their prizes, I will need to ship to someone who is an adult. So keep all that in mind, but yeah, post your entries to hashtag Bricks by Mind Crystal King Contest, and I'll be judging them based off both the creativity of the minifigure and how well written their description is. Also, bonus points if you do some cool photography with your custom minifigure, but you don't need to do that to win. But I think that's about all I have to say for the contest. Best of luck to all of you, and I look forward to seeing your entries. If you enjoyed the custom builds in this video, you may also enjoy this video that I just put in the top right corner. But of course, thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed, please press like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I do Lego and Ninjago videos just like this one almost every day, so if you subscribe, we'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!